on this episode of the Roundtable Podcast, brought to you by MaxEverMuscle.com and Sam Adams. We go a little bit everywhere, but it's motivational, informational, and aspirational. Mm. Yeah, Cole's going to the WWE, talk about habits for 2023, and Trey's going to get all of his NFT honeys going. Woo! Talked about... <laughs> He's like, psych. <laughs> yeah, um, talked about Deion Sanders a lot, too. Which we did. Was, uh, yeah. pretty cool, yeah. It is cool. I think this was like a good business-oriented, skill-based podcast. And just for everyone listening, you now have to refer to Trey as King Trey. So, <laughs> I think it's definitely going to provoke some thought. The conversation is a little bit everywhere, but I think it's uh, entertaining and in, in informational. And you're going to get a lot out of the show. Let's go to the show. Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms Danny at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susack. We're the Roundtable Podcast brought to you by MaxEverMuscle.com and Sam, Adden, Sam Adams, <laughs> Boston Lager, butchered <laughs> that. Thanks for the beer, guys. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, glad to see you. Yep. What do we got to talk about? <laughs> uh, what do you got? Yeah, I know, well, Cole, you're looking inspired over there. No, yeah. All right, so. <laughs> it's definitely the Reggie Bush. Listen, yeah, Reggie yeah. Bush jersey is OP. Shout, shout out Hall of Famer, arguably. Give the man his fucking Heisman back. Dude, that's facts. That honestly is despicable. As My, a, like, diehard college football fan. Man. Like, I would, like, you know, if there wasn't so much history, I'd just say, fuck the Heisman. Yeah, like, yeah. You know? My favorite like, thing. He should, just, he, right, he should make his own trophy. My favorite thing about when he was on <laughs> I Am Athlete is Shady McCoy, and they were saying how he, he sent back the trophy. Shady's like, you mean you packed it up and sent it back? He's like, I'd have been like, can't find it. <laughs> like, like, I, I don't know what happened to it. He's like, well, fuck it, you know, like. They asked for it back, and if they're they're taking it from me, I don't want to keep it if it's not mine. Like, yeah, yeah. he's like, "Fuck, I'd have been like, well, I'm not sure where I put it at, sir." <laughs> it's <my laughs> it's kind of fu- it's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, dude, he's getting inducted to the College Football Hall of Fame. I don't. Are understand. they inducting him? Yeah, he's in the College Football Hall of Fame. They oh, put he should him in. be. So it's it's literally the Heisman Committee is basically it's all those like old white dudes. Come on, just man. pissed off basically. So hey, you know who the first. Uh, this is kind of similar. The first person that placed a bet in Ohio legally was Pete Rose. Okay. I'm pretty Are sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like when sports betting became legal, yeah. they made it a thing that the first bet, I'm almost positive I saw this on Twitter. That was some promo. Pete Rose was the fucking promo Old habits for it. don't die. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was, I remember when I collected his baseball cards, he was a manager player. So he was managing the team. Yeah, but still played sometimes, and then was betting on games you, on the side. I you, guess I don't know. You know what's interesting about Pete Rose is before I even knew that, I knew him from like wrestling. He was involved in like was he in WWE? WWE? He was in the WWE, and they would always have him on. So I knew Pete Rose as what? like the wrestler. That's not hilarious. as like no. the anything anything like that. Speaking of that, the Saudis buy WWE. So this what the is fuck a, is this going is, so on this there? Is a huge topic. Huge topic. Yeah, so huge topic. I'm a huge a few, topic guy. A few months ago, uh, Vince McMahon came out that he had like this scandal with like some employee and he basically paid her like paid her off paid her like a few mil or something like that Jeez. so some huge thing right? okay so he stepped down as ceo triple h takes over i remember that okay basically revives wrestling the wrestling community because he's a guy he's yeah. a guy from it yeah too. yeah, yeah. He, and he, he lives it he's up with everything he knows what needs to happen yeah the good brothers said he's amazing by the way yeah they yeah. love triple h yeah he, he's a fucking goat so he takes over, basically revives wrestling. Wrestling community's pumped, right? It turned like Vince McMahon must have, they must have done something, but the board elected Vince McMahon to return as CEO. His daughter was working Stephanie. as, yeah, I, she might have been the CEO and okay. Triple H was in charge of the creative. Okay. She resigns. And okay. she had resigned before whenever this whole scandal came out. She came back once her dad left. So, don't know what that's going on. Damn. But now Vince McMahon's like, I'm taking it back, and now he's open to sell it. So there's a lot of people in the so mix. So he came back to sell it. Yes, he he came back to sell it. So obviously they're going to elect him to do that or whatever. But there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, speculation on who are the potential candidates. But I wouldn't be surprised if Saudi Arabia doesn't buy the WWE because they have a WWE in Saudi Arabia has a partnership that they do. I think like two shows a year okay. in Saudi Arabia, and it, it's like a billion dollars a year. Like they signed a crazy what? contract with them to do it, so it could be like a live situation or something like All that. All right, I was I just know. gonna say. So it comes like to what Liv did, right? And so this is a interesting topic because it's half business, half motivational type podcast, right? Like 
would you sell it to the Saudis if the money's right? Or is that like a problem? Danny, would you sell it to the Saudis? They said, <laughs> Danny, you're worth $1 billion. We're the only buyer. We're going to pay you a billion. <laughs> Can take this a lot of ways. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I don't know. I mean, if I was like really into wrestling, maybe not. I'm, but in any business, if the Saudis came to buy my website tomorrow, would I sell it to them? Would you? Probably. Probably, yeah. And, but somebody's <laughs> like, that's fucking blood money. Uh, is that where but, it came from? But I don't know. It also comes back to like, it, like, because uh, whenever this was whole going on with Liv, they basically showed that their Saudi investment fund is in everywhere. In everything. Dude, they're involved in everything. everything. That, that fucking oil money is everywhere, homie. Like all over the fucking place. Yeah. Probably in these shoes and these pants. It's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So. But yes. So okay. <laughs> yeah. Trey, you selling the NFT project to the Saudis? Yeah, I would take the money. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I wish though. I wish though that Cole had the opportunity though to place his own bid though on the WWE. I know, dude. I'd buy it. I I would do six, this. Six point first million. off, first off, one of the biggest changes I would make in wrestling. So for those of you who hadn't watched, please is one of the best things about wrestling as a kid mm -hmm. that is the reason why you get attracted to the superstars. I've talked about this before. Okay. Where I draw a lot of creative inspiration. Yeah, yeah, Are the entrances. Okay. So the guy who, you, first off, we'll start at Do the Do we music. need an entrance for the podcast? Uh, Yeah. So Cole we does. Well, <laughs> well if, whenever we do a live podcast, I'll give an intro. Oh, okay, whatever. okay, I got it. But, all right, so they got this. They got the huge stage set up, which that's, like, probably one of the big issues for me personally is because now since, I understand why they did it, but now they used to have, like, the ramp, a stage, they were elevated. Yeah, they would yeah. do a bunch of shit, but now it's that. just like a huge screen, probably because it's easier to set up yeah. and they can change it out and do whatever. But it takes away from like making them seem bigger than life. Mm. And they also removed the ramp, which whenever they would come out, they'd be above everyone. <laughs> yeah. So just the like, ramp's epic. Yeah. So just yeah. subtly <laughs> thinking about it, like, you're like, this guy is a fucking king. He's on the ramp. He's walking down right. the ramp and shit like that. Oh, it's the hero. It's the hero it angle. It is. It's the hero would, angle. That's the first thing I'd bring back. What would you do to be able to run down that ramp one time? Dude, I've thought about this. So many <laughs> times. I've thought about this so this many times. This is amazing. Times. Literally, you know one, of my, hey, hold one on. of my what dreams. What would you be wearing? No, it's amazing. Is I've never thought about this once. Yeah. I can't wait what, to hear dude, about. I've thought about. I've thought about this so many times. What would my theme song be? Is a huge question. What would it be? I dude, I I bounce back and forth a lot. I listen to songs. I'm like, oh man, this could be it because I could time it out to this. That's a huge thing in wrestling because yeah. in ju just like UFC, like you, those people walk out, yeah, they got that sick. song. You're like, as soon as the music hits, you're like, oh fuck yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's, like it's coming. That like I've thought about this a million times. That's one of my like dreams. When we interview Matt Brown, we should ask him about that process, dude. That would be one of the coolest yeah. things. And actually, here, if I was in charge of the UFC, I'd basically rip off the WWE, bring a fucking stage in, and have them strike on a ramp. Strike Force used to do it like that when, before they bought them out. They had more of a spectacle like that. Bellator does it a little bit more because walking I think. through the crowd is cool. But yeah. imagine if like where because they have a longer walk, which I think is even cooler. Yeah, yeah. But they don't have like a stage. Like they just come mm -hmm. out of the locker room. It's not like a whole yeah. thing. Like that'd be sick as fuck. Yeah, I know. But, there's definitely like certain songs with certain fighters that you know, bring a certain emotion in big crowds. And I've been in the house a few times for some UFC fights when shit drops. It's just fucking, yeah. it's, it's, it's insane. I'm but sure the same. One of my bucket list things is to get inside of a WWE ring. Cause all, I, all I'm thinking about is like during a match or whatever. And then they're like, Oh, what? Who's backstage? And then fucking no, 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 you just, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's like, all I'm thinking dude, about. Dude, all right, all right. Uh, here, hypothetical. This is a hypothetical pitch to the Good Brothers. Shout out to the Good Brothers. If you're listening, this could be a good idea. You're in Wheeling, West Virginia, in the Ohio Valley, okay. doing a live show. It's a dark show. We're homies. We're kicking it backstage. They got a tag team. And it turns out uh, the people that they're fighting have a third guy standing back watching them. It's like their manager or whatever. Okay. Right? Exactly. Right? Yep. This is the Wheeling Civic Center. This is at the Wheeling Civic Center, Ohio Valley. Everyone's there. The Max River Mafia. Yes. My mom's there. Everyone's yes. there, right? Shout out to Shout out Cole's man. mom. Good brothers. You know, they're in a dog fight. They're getting it. The the two people they're facing, no one likes them. They're the heels. Fuck them. Yeah. They start doing some shady stuff. Then the manager slides them a steel chair. Then all of a sudden, the guys that are going against pick up a steel chair and about to hit him. Then you hear the crowd go nuts. I'm running down the fucking yes! entrance. Everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and then and then you can come out like the whole squad comes out. Yes. And it's like the Maxim from Mafia got the Good Brothers back. Good Brothers win, win the tag team championship. Fuck yeah. At 
Yes, that'd be fucking sick. If you had one, if you had to pick one object to to throw or something or hit someone with, what would it be? Would it be the chair or what? Dude, I think mine would be a the trash chair. Is can. The chair's the most like classic I would love thing, to put right? someone through a table. A table, okay. A table, put yeah, spear someone through a table. I feel like that would be sick. I ever tell you my story about going to wrestling at the Willing Civic Center when I was a little kid? No, I saw Andre the Giant, Jake the Snake. Oh, really? When I was like nine. Yeah. So my dad took me. Took me to something. I'm pretty sure it was my dad. Somebody took me. Anyway, we went to it, and it was like full-blown Ricky the Dragon, fucking Ultimate Warrior. I mean, all of the big names at the time, because yeah. I'm like in probably like I'm like third grade or something. But I saw, <laughs> yeah, it was it was fucking awesome. Dude, was Andre listening. the Giant was, I mean, when you're a little kid, too. I mean, he was massive anyway. He yeah. literally looked like a giant. I was like in awe. Like he walked by, and I was just like, holy shit. It was just a huge human. Yeah, it was, it was pretty circus shit. Yeah, it was pretty wild. It was pretty yeah. wild, dude. When it, yeah, because whenever I was growing up, I actually just rewatched. So, I went to like all the live shows as a kid. If they had them in Wheeling, sometimes mm-hmm. they would have like the the recordings in Columbus. Yeah, so yeah. We'd travel up like two hours, go watch. So you went to multiple shows. Yeah. Well, I was trying to find one specifically that I vividly remember because I was a little bit older. It was probably like six or seven, mm-hmm. and I, I could vividly remember like sitting where I was and like watching them come out from the angle I had. And I'm like, where the fuck is that? So I was like looking on like Peacock because they have everything. Yeah. And turns out they had a live show in Wheeling. So I like went back and rewatched it. It was pretty cool. Hell yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. The That was a cool experience. I remember because I used to have like all the like dolls and the things like I, I had the wrestling ring. Like yeah. I was pretty into it when I was a little kid. Yeah. I, had all I didn't that. know it was fake. I mean, but yeah. it's not. I mean. But all right. Hold on. So. <laughs> so my pick. To, for who is gonna who I think makes the most sense to go after WWE was here was the list that someone put out. It was I was gonna say, do you have a list on yeah, your phone? So, so yeah, so someone, someone I was thinking it w, out. I was thinking WME, same people that bought the UFC. Yeah, so are they on that list? Uh they have NBC Universal, like Comcast okay. potentially buying it. Fox, which they have SmackDown live now. Yeah. So that depends yeah. buy. <clears throat> Disney Mm-hmm. I thought Disney would be a good one because that's a shit ton of content. Streaming. But I think the best option would be Amazon Prime. Yeah, I agree. Because with that. Amazon they Prime. They have the money, too. With the money, uh, I'm pretty sure Bezos and Vince McMahon are already tight. And then I'm also. Sure. I'm sure they um, juice out and ride on yachts together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it would make sense with Amazon Prime because <clears throat> with their whole initiative with like live sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they have three live shows per week that people would tune into and a huge pay-per-view each month of people all over the world. I no. think it would make sense. The business and the streaming stuff is so wild right now. Yeah. And so competitive. It's, it's actually kind of mind boggling. Um, but also it just shows how much opportunity is there. Mm-hmm. You know, you get hot. I mean, you, you, you have so many options, like watching what Joe Rogan was able to do with Spotify, seeing what these, like pro, what, what Dion's doing with prime video too. He starts with Barstool. He migrates over to there. Now he's going to be capturing it, and his kids are helping run all that. It's it's fucking awesome. Yeah. It's really awesome. Have you watched the Dion documentary? Mm-hmm. I haven't watched you the watch newest it? one. Uh-uh. It's really good. I watched the one Dana put together, the original. Like, See, I, watched some I of haven't that. watched any of those. Yeah, I watched some of those just because I was following Dana, and, you know, that was because his content led me to actually Dion's content, even though I love Dion. But, and I've, I've watched several interviews with Dion. Like, him staying true to himself – is probably the reason why I was drawn to him so much. Even though part of like, I watch his uh, Hall of Fame speech. It's really good if you guys haven't seen it. He talks about primetime being a character. He's talking about having a brand before it was even a brand. Talk about building this personal brand, um, you know, feeding what people wanted to see, but then backing it up. He's like, yo, you got a brand, but you ain't got no game. I had game and I had a brand and I had a purpose. So he explained all that. And then he's just like, you know, just continuing to be himself at such a degree. And he's so fucking confident because he just keeps backing it up. I just think that's why I was always drawn to him. So him now in this iteration of he was talking to Shannon, he's like, well, dude, we ain't put pads on him for a minute. We're still impacting at an extremely high level. It's it's really the Colorado thing's really exciting. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to see what happens. So have you watched any of that, Danny, or anything like that? No, definitely not. Though. Dude, what's interesting about him is he literally does back it up and like whenever he's like coaching in the documentary he says some like real like good shit in there oh yeah like he's teaching real he's teaching kids how to be men dude one one million percent yeah what also i like is and, and i've tried to take from this for years is like 
when he fucked up something about this, uh, he had something called a uh, prime something that didn't work. And the guy he gave his likeness to was shady before he went to Jackson. And he just said, yo, lesson learned. I fucked up was the wrong people. Uh, some people got hurt. I should have never been that easy with my likeness. Fixed it, kept it moving. He didn't dodge it. Like, because everybody makes mistakes, but a lot of people like to go around it. Just like when Dave Tate asked me about uh, MP, and I was like, we never made no money. And then it was like, next question. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? There's no, like, I, I just, I think I respect that too, because you see him doing so well, but he never won the SWAC championship or whatever, you know, was in the, where he played Southern and had, so it's like, he went undefeated and lost that game two years in a row. And so he says, we didn't get it done. It was like, so I just like the fact that he addresses that he does fall short on things. He murders most everything, but I enjoy that about him though, too, because that shows even through how confident he is, there's a humility that is like desirable. Like for, like, I want to be a confident person and believe in myself but also I've really tried to do a better job of like when shit ain't working, my bad just is what it is. A lot of people don't operate that way. That's why I respect what, him even more. What was your thoughts on uh, the interview speech whenever he got t like taken over at Colorado and he went in and basically was like, a lot of you guys like probably aren't going to play in like, or if you guys want to leave or whatever, he was basically telling them, like, he's testing he, them. Yeah. He's basically like, if you, you might not like, you probably won't have a job. So, what I learned by dealing with people that are like the level of Dion is they like to test to see if you're about it. And so if you're a kid in that, in that seat for one second, you don't, you're thinking this ain't for me, for, for me, like, Oh, this is this guy ain't for me. You're out. But if you take it as a challenge, I'm oh, motherfucker. I can play. I want to be here. He's waiting for that kid to say, you ain't fucking replacing me. And I'm going to show you through my action you're not going to replace me. I'm not going to the fucking portal. I'm here for it. I think those that's what those talks are for. And there, it takes the right kind of kid to respond that way. But that's who he wants in the room. And that's who he's trying to draw there. So I take those talks like they sound really arrogant if you don't, in my opinion. But I don't ever take things that way. I see what he's trying to get out of people. And so it's almost... Um, I, I watch a talk like that and I'm just like smiling the whole way because I'm looking at the kids' eyes. You can see some of them like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. But then there's going to be a couple killers that go, this is exactly where I need to be. And I think what he does in those talks, now he said when he gave that same talk at Jackson, 70 kids he replaced. It was some crazy number. Like Jeez. most of the team left. And Dion's coming to your school and most of your team leaves. But I think it's that down the middle expectation we uh we want excellence only and so i fuck with it um because i would be the kid that goes i'm already you know a hard-working kid i want this in my life but most you know that's what he's looking for in my opinion is that how you took it yeah i mean i it that yeah, made me like want to run through a wall like there you go. i think that shit's like like good you know hell yeah because you know i think the whole transfer portal thing though just in sports is like nut it's nuts he gave a breakdown that 40% of his players are going to be, um, like, from Colorado or, like, stay or whatever. Yeah. 40% <clears throat> is going to be from the transfer portal. He's only taken 20% of his team from high school. Yeah. So, all right, Trey's the only actual college athlete that went D1. Mm -hmm. Trey, if you knew you go to Akron right initially and you're like, fuck this, I can just jump in the transfer portal. Like, you, you just got to get started somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It, so to me and that's how that's like what a lot of track athletes do exactly too, because, i know you mentioned that so yeah. speak on that just because like track like in track like it's a sport where there's just like a mark so like you know like you know your time you know like yeah. your mark in the event and everything and it's like it's not like did you play good you mean yeah did you, like it's just that's what it is either you're good or you're not yeah and so like a lot of people what they do is they go to like a smaller division one school or whatever get a good time and then they can transfer to like a big school and stuff like that but think now with there's no regs you could don't have to sit out it's yeah. not a big deal coaches has to accept you whatever the process is like for me i'd be like yo just put me on the field somewhere and then i'm going to, i wouldn't even recruit high school hardly yeah. i'm dion with the with social media activity i like exactly i love his strategy he just tweets hey i'm not that hard to find <laughs> I need a D end. I'm not that hard to find. Yeah. How do you compete with that? They're going to be in the college football championship within probably two years. How yeah. do you compete with that? 
It's unbelievable. It's yeah. the leverage of social media and the exposure in the exact way to build something that other people are gonna have a hard time rivaling, even if they got the money. Yeah. Because he got NIL the pop. He got too. the pop, dude. Yeah. He got the sauce. Yeah. I would say the, the, I'd go there in a fucking heartbeat. The <laughs> the transfer portal combined with mm. NIL is like Yeah, it's kind of a it's, it's kind of a weird combo. Dicey situation. And I'm I'm like thinking like if I was like a high school re- like recruit and I had the potential like the physical potential to go D one, that would probably be so, it's probably even way more fucking tough now, like way more tough. So think think about how legit you even is. have to be to go to a Mac school. Well, you're recruiting not just one type of recruit now. Now the whole portal is wide open. Yeah, recruiting completely changed through this, in my opinion. That's insane. It is insane. I don't know where we go from here. Got anything to add, Danny? <clears throat> not really. Just go, I was gonna say to go back to. Uh, you know, when you're talking about Dion challenging the people at Colorado yeah. right now, is like, how do you do that with us here, mm-hmm. with previous people, with your kids or whatever? How do you do that or how do you approach that? Yeah, I think um, part of my, when I remind all of us, and usually, and this is funny because I've been writing a lot more, obviously I've been sending it to you and just thinking like, usually when I'm writing or challenging even people I work with, I'm really doing it to myself too. I'm really talking to myself. Mm-hmm. It just happens to be, I'm talking to everybody because I'm talking to myself, right? It, so that's what I, I, one point that James Clear made on the podcast with Tim Ferriss, he said when he's writing things, it's to keep himself on track. Then it affects all these other people, but he's really looking inside, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not, so it's the same thing. So when I'm saying, uh, when my dialogue is like protect the environment, protect the agility we have, uh, the freedom that we have. I'm really talking to myself, but also talking to you guys because we're a team, right? But I'm reminding myself I want this co- to continue, mm-hmm. which then reminds you guys mm-hmm. that because we've all had it where it's not like this, mm-hmm. most of us, right? And so I think that when I'm challenging things like that or like I get up and just think like, I know we're fucking better than this, mm-hmm. like, but why aren't we showing that or what are we missing? So I don't know, I think, Maybe in the gym, it's a little different. It's more aggressive. It's more direct. Take the fucking weight again. Don't be fucking soft. Like all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. I think I operate both ways. It just depends. But there's a sim. But that's the version of business too. I think. But I'm, I'm trying to more because I'm the OG of the group and been through a lot. I'm trying to more remind everybody, including myself, how good this is. Mm-hmm. And I don't want it to stop. So you know, everybody can get lackadaisical, including myself. And so it's like, I think that's more of the challenge of like, if we want to keep continuing and make it better, we have to be reminded of how different it is than everyone else. Mostly. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? It's necessary. I think it is. It is for, for every, sure. it is for me. I have to look at it every day. Like even just being reflective a little bit, like I have been, has been helping me a ton. So, all right. So piggyback off this. Sure. Uh, let's, let's go back to how Dion, you know, trusted that one guy with his likeness, like in this like bi- business yeah, yeah. partnership. How, what's like the advice and strategy of testing like a potential relationship like that, whether it's like mm-hmm. working with a business partner or like an, an employee or anything like yeah. that? Like how, how do you I run think, that? criteria you mean? Yeah, I think yeah. that um, what I learned from dealing specifically with Arnold was there would be tasks thrown out that would get increasingly more difficult and the timeline would get increasingly faster to see if we could execute them. And he did it all the time. And then every time we would execute it, he would give us a little bit more freedom with the likeness, agility, things he would do. You had like a, it was like a, a magical kind of stair step that I don't know if he did it super specific or if he did. I, I don't know. I never asked him, but it felt that way. And I would say I kind of do things the same way. Sometimes I know him, I'm doing it. And sometimes I don't know I'm doing it but it's how I operated since I got it operated on me because I saw, okay, I'm gaining his trust. Right. And so that's where I think it's like you give somebody mild amount of responsibility. And if chapter six, they over deliver, you give them a little bit more and then you give them a little more. And here's the other key is there gets to be a point where I think it then trans, it it basically goes over an edge to where you know they would give that type of effort when you're not telling them to. And that's really hard to get to. You guys are all there, obviously, which is why you're sitting in these chairs, right? And everyone that we work with, I believe, does that. But
but think about how many people we had to go through to find it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's the point. The percentage is super small. Uh, most people trip up on the first couple. I love the people that tell me all the stuff they're going to do and they can't even do 10% of it. I mean, I'm not even really around people like that it's anymore. Yeah, yeah, I just don't even do that. But, but I do that even on social media when people say, hey, I want to know this. I go, well, go lunge 800 meters for 30 days and come back to me. You know how many people do that? Pretty small amount. So I, I learned that from him. You know, because the biggest thing was after we got the deal, okay, uh, it's Monday. I want to launch on Friday and I want a lot of people there and I want to like have the bus there and like see you on Friday. <laughs> and I'm like, we come, or it was like the Sunday before. We come out of the meeting, we're like, the bus isn't wrapped. We don't have the fucking, you need like permits to have a yeah. party at fucking Muscle Beach. Especially there, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It, it, it's not like an easy process. It goes through like, LA County and I was like and he wants a lot of fucking people there <laughs> we're, right, we're in a boardroom we go yeah. the fuck are we gonna do and you can't tell him like I mean he's like I'm available that Friday <laughs> I mean it's it's like wait alright so alright so alright that's a great example now what's like what was the first thing you did after that oh my gosh we sat in the boardroom or wherever the fuck and we were like first off we were like how the fuck are we gonna pull this off and then it went to all right, we have no choice. Mm -hmm. And so then the first thing was we had to pay extra to get the bus wrapped faster because we had that big ass tour bus that had him on the side of it, right? Yeah, it was so loud. Yeah. <laughs> I was in charge of like bothering the shit out of LA County or whatever it was to get the fucking permits. I had to call a couple favors in of the guy that owns the building across from it. Like he knew everybody, had to call that favor in. I called CT. We didn't even have a relationship with CT at the time. Mike Rashad wasn't big yet, called him. Hey, can you guys come down and bring the homies and let's bang arms? I literally, because I was banging arms with those guys. Yeah. We were doing buddy curls, me, CT, and Mike Rashad, Rashid. And so I was like, and then we got Tom, then I had to call Tom Arnold, be like, Tom, can you MC the thing? Like it was hair on fire, tell everybody, you know, throw it out there, da 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 da. And then we got to like Thursday and all the stuff started coming through. I'm like, we're actually going to fucking pull this off. And then do Damn. we get there? And it was fucking packed. But I like how he was like, I need a lot of people there. And like a lot of like, you know, guys that lift weights and like have it like being, it's real busy in the pit. I mean, it was like. And he specifically wanted the tour bus? Yeah, he was like, I want the bus. Because we told him, that was part of our thing. Like, we'll have that. He's like, you know, have that parked outside. Because he okay. thought I think we already had it done. Oh, okay. We had it bought, but it wasn't yeah. wrapped. I mean, what, what, dude, what, to what wrap was, a what tour was, bus is, I mean, it's not small. It's yeah. Like, what, 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 was, what was the purpose of the tour bus? Oh, we did like a college tour. Oh, okay. Yeah, and handed out a bunch of stuff. Um, Adam, cool. didn't you ride on it for a couple of days? Yeah. It, uh, was it a party bus? No, Adam, my sales manager, which he's probably never driven a fucking bus like no. that okay. in his entire yeah. life. But they, him and Luke drove out to... California, and then we met him there at the CrossFit Games. We had the, we had the yeah, they took it to the, the games. games. They just went around and hung out. And then out. we drove back to Denver. Yeah, with it, which was pretty. Amazing. And it was a huge crazy. bus, right? Huge. Do you have to get a CDL to drive that? It was just. I'm I think it was just small enough that you didn't, but it was oh, big as wow. fuck. It was. It was literally it was like what Morgan though. pulled up in here. I mean, yeah. okay, yeah, it was fucking. It was, but wrapped. I drove. Cool. I drove Alex to school in it one day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so Adam came in town. That's sick. And I was like, AG, I think he was probably like a fifth or sixth grade. I'm like, I want to take you to I school. I feel like we this. need a school bus. I, I was like, I want to take you to school on this. He's like, all right. So I fucking whipped that thing and took him to school. It was pretty funny. I think it had uh, Arnold on one side, maybe Kaepernick on the other side. I can't remember. I think it, it was Cap. Yeah, it was sweet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> school bus. <laughs> so, but anyway, my point is on a much smaller scale, yeah. I try to do the same thing to see. If people will give up by third or fourth or fifth, because most people can kind of get away with a couple, mm -hmm. but then like you try to see, that's why I love the morning stuff. I, I, I can't, I, I keep beating on this, but the reality is like that is weeded out so many. It's people. like the natural so, test. Oh my yeah. gosh, dude. So fast. Well, what you, know? you, what you just said basically described the exact trajectory of what my relationship with you has been. Yeah. Like exactly. And like I said, I don't know if I, I think I just do it instinctively now, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I said, I'm going to make Danny do this and then I'm going to make him do that. No. Yeah. yeah I definitely know. It and then that. he had to go to the strip joint and see if he could handle that. And then I had to take him this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we knew that. You said that see, one. Purpose, yeah. I, I've, I've also, <laughs> Trey's like, you never had me do that one. <laughs> <laughs> I've also naturally thought that if like, pe like people, 
test me even if they're not supposed to be doing it and i don't know like where that comes from like mm. why i think it's a test i do think it stems back to like high school football because i remember there was times where like our head coach shout out he, he probably, i think he's a listener and stuff like that yeah, so yeah. Shout, what out, up? shout out coach johnson hey, he's, not coach. Small. he's not small he actually did the the turkey arm day arm blast or whatever he That's texted right. he texted Double me shout out. he texted me he goes i'm almost 50 Nafo? years uh, the, no, I don't, he, he, I think he would definitely be a good candidate for the NAFO. Okay, okay. <laughs> submit a score. Yeah, but but anyway, he texted me on Thanksgiving. He goes, "Hey, did that turkey arm day arm blast?" He goes, "I'm almost fucking fifty years old. Fifty years old. I almost made it through without putting it down." That's like pretty that. amazing. Yeah, but I he he used to like give out like small subtle tests, mm. like just of, can you like can you can you go do this for me? Can you? you know, take this kid and do whatever. So I think he was always throwing shots. But I also remember, like, whenever I was interning and stuff like that and making, like, sort of making graphics, I thought I was getting tested all the time. You probably were. Basically. Well, and that's the thing is I've caught that. I caught that from him, and I and then I started catching it in other occasions. Like, oh, okay, I see what this is. They're trying to see if I'm about it or not. Mm -hmm. So I like the test, and I like, obviously, when I know I'm going to breeze through it. But I'd never, probably my career really had so we got to also remember too like building the business on my own i really didn't have anybody that was testing me until then i started working with other you know influential people to that level no one really operated that way so that was really the first time i probably got i mean i was tested on do i want muscle farm to survive i have to do these things but then when i started working with people like of that nature or big corporations whether they were, you know, there was a, definitely a lot of tests that were either on purpose or not, but that's how I looked at it. So why don't you, <clears throat> why don't you talk about people that aren't getting tested? Like, what what do you say to them? Like, yeah, so that they can like well, it's hard progress to, in life and not just be on autopilot. Yeah, I think it's hard to grow if you're not being tested a little bit sometimes, right? And I even look at that as my in my own uh, life. Like, am I even doing things that are hard right now? Mm -hmm. You know, because then you just become soft because you're seeking comfort and it's not that difficult. Part of the reason why I did the, and, and planned the dual event last year was that I'm like, look, I've been competing for fucking ever. And yeah, I've done that a few times, but I was like, could we challenge Trayvon to capture it? And then for us to put it together. Right. And Kyle helped with that obviously too. And then can I challenge, you know, three or four guys in the crew to also do it with me that all ages, which I thought was important about with the documentary. And then more often than just like, could I just challenge myself to be healthy enough? Cause I was banged up a little bit to make it through the fucking thing. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I clicked it on magically, I fucking felt great and just worked through it. Right. And so I think like I've, I've naturally kind of operated like that and that's what I'm trying to, that's why I'm trying to do some similar things right now. I don't know that I've, I'm trying to put out some goals for myself that I'm kind of keeping more like internal right now, but it's like that are pretty lofty. And I, I think I've attained a lot of things that I thought I probably never would. And so it gets a little weird because then it's a little bit hard to keep push. There's no, there's no mountain ceiling, whatever. Um, but I think I've, uh, to be honest with you guys, I think I went way further than I ever thought I was even fucking possible. So sometimes it's a little tricky cause I don't want to just coast, but also, um, so I'm trying to reframe like, all right, what's a limit. What's something I would say that I want to accomplish that people go, I haven't maybe made people feel that way in a while. So that's one of the things in 2023 yeah. There's a couple of things I'm working on that, um, you know, kind of do that to me. So it make me feel like, Man, if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna really have to fucking work. Mm -hmm. And so that that I think a lot of people need to kind of dig deep on some of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, this just makes me think of Mike. What Michael Easter talks about in his book, the Masogi thing. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly what it like is. every year. Where do it's something like really difficult. Fifty percent chance of yeah. like failing, pretty much. So like you're. He's like, a smart guy, man. He actually commented on one of my threads about lunges. He was like, "Okay, shout out." He's like, "No, I get it. Yeah, shout out Michael Easter." I mean, he was like one of the first comments, which I thought was really cool. <laughs> And then the guy today told me I'm I'm going overboard. He's like, I, in my opinion, I just want to let you know the threads are going overboard. So I quote tweeted and said, "Hey man, I'm glad you noticed. Um, sorry that you're <laughs> upset that I'm helping people." <laughs> <laughs> and then some dude quote tweeted, "Go dead body." <laughs> 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 I'm really happy I'm on Twitter as much as tw as Trey now. I'm yeah. out here. I'm out here. Just saying. Trey's All right, here. Trey, you haven't yeah. talked much. Talk a little bit. Go. About. I don't know. Just. Well, let's talk, talk about let, let, let's talk about consistency. Obviously, consistency is a big thing. Yeah. And anyone who's paying attention 
paying attention to King Trayvon on Twitter, notice that he's on Twitter. Building the community, dude. Building Shirtless relationships on the and all that shit. So can you can you speak on that, Trey? Yeah. Trey's back on AF right now, and, and he his exact words were, I'm already getting shredded. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to Danny about that. Yeah. I, looking in the mirror, you can already tell the difference. Twitter mommies. Yeah. Out here. <laughs> Trey's fucking squatting again. Now he didn't die two weeks ago in the fucking bar. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah he's doing good. Die. Yeah, talk about because you you <laughs> made well here, Trey. You made it. You made a decision. Now whether you're tweeting half degenerate things at times, that's irrelevant. But you made a decision to make it a priority to be on there. Yeah. And you went from 500 followers to like damn near 8,000. Brand new account. Brand new account. There you go. Totally brand Shut new. Shut it account down. When I started, mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, it's obviously in your engagement is wild. Yeah. And you're building a community. You're doing exactly what I did with my workouts, but in the NFT space and in other space, but that's the main space. Like, so what was the, where did the, where did the light bulb come at, come on at? Was it just all the, the um, hotties out here or what? <laughs> definitely not that. Ah! Um, it's definitely not that Corey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not live right now. You're good. <laughs> Um, I like they the, won't hear. so like the consistency, like with Twitter, like what I like about it is just like kind of what we talked about before on the podcast where like what I wanted to be involved with was something like kind of like technological, like revolution esque, like, mm -hmm. um, kind of like innovator, like type, like status type thing on the and frontier. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I think that like web three NFTs, cryptocurrency, all like all those kind of things, like as just a niche in general is something that is becoming more and more mainstream like as of recently and yeah. that it's going to only continue to but like cryptocurrency is like something that has been around for like i mean like o like over 10 years now and so like there's already ogs when it comes to like bitcoin and sure. ethereum and a whole bunch of other like coins and stuff like that in a sense and then there's now all these different niches within cryptocurrency like nfts or like like web3 or twitter and stuff like that and so that's where i'm kind of trying to like find my lane at plant your flag bro. yeah is um kind of just like establish myself like within those communities so that then within you know like five or ten years when this is something that has been around for a long time yep. then i'm like an og in it well i mean if you think about uh I, when twitter start like oh eight yeah. I made my first account in 2011, but yeah. I, but it was a few years before that. Yeah, mine and I I did mine in 2010. So I really is similar. Fresh account, started interacting, planted my flag as one of the guys that creates content in it and and just wrote it, bro. You know what I mean? So it's like that's the thing is and it took a couple years, but I was so fucking consistent that I was able to make my mark as an industry guy, which is I think the same thing you're doing. Yeah. 100% just in a different way, but it's all the same at the end of the, I mean, for the NFT project, when your main influencer is King Trayvon, I like that. I like that. Dude, we, we were talking about uh, NFT NYC, like yeah. this upcoming year. I'm literally, I've been joking saying I'm going to have to be security. For it's going to be me at but, the Arnold 2014. But I'm, <laughs> I'm legitimately going to have to be Trey security. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be great. I keep telling my kids I'm about to get hot again. And I yeah. can feel it coming. It's exciting out here so hot, uh, beware hot in what way well i mean not only just hot physically because my <laughs> abs are coming back but there it is. just like content you know motivation new new crowd of people plus re i think re-motivating the old crowd just like getting hot baby so you know? all right so this this leads into something that i was uh listening to napoleon hill talk like about it. personal like initiative and stuff i saw like you that. tweet something about that yeah actually uh the locker rocker newsletter varsity creative we yeah, started a newsletter out. i linked it in the newsletter so Fuck if yeah. you got that you know go subscribe varsity creative.com hell yeah no free shout outs shout out <laughs> yeah uh, but, but not free but you make I the linked, graphic for the so, podcast so napoleon, <laughs> so, Na, so napoleon hill has all of his lectures on spotify for free Oh, Someone cool. uploaded them, archived them. They're on there. I fuck with so that. So the one about personal initiative I was listening to. Mm -hmm. And just with this whole Web3 and like Trey, uh, this like really made me think. He he said, today's employer usually is yesterday's employee who found opportunity waiting for him at the end of the second mile. Yep. And I feel this is just me thinking about like your Web3 journey and how you're the king, Trey, is that whenever we first got into NFTs, it was hot. Everyone wanted in. And what you saw was a lot of bullshit fucking influencers. Oh, yeah. Blowing smoke, not really saying anything like that. But now you've outlasted and you're killing it while it's down. While Facts. no one's looking yeah. at Guess it. Guess what happens when you're, it's up? The, yeah, you're playing the flag. <laughs> yeah. So it's sick. Well, and the uh, 
what I love about that, when I read that, it's like all the experiences that you guys as young business people that are with dealing with me, as I move on to an OG OG at some point, you guys are in my chair. It's all going to happen. It's going to happen. It's just, it's process, right? So it's like all the experiences I had prior that made me put myself in this position. It's like you're working under somebody to be the the guy at some point. It's just what it's just the natural progression of people that are motivated. Right. So it's like, I think that what's amazing is that our, the way we're set up is so unique because everybody can do their own thing too. But I still love that we have a team, but we can still root for Trey to be the king of NFTs and it doesn't hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. Still root for Danny to be the king of email marketing. That doesn't hurt anybody. Still root for Cole to be the graphic gangster ultimate king. In WWE. In, yeah, and, and we're going to help that dream come true too. I don't care if we got to host our own event. I wish it was kind of not wish COVID was back, but like when they were doing the shit yeah. at their house on COVID, that Dude, was our spot, yeah, bro. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that, yeah. that was that we fucked that up, Man. Cole. We should have just drove to wherever to Florida and been in one of those pay-per-views with the Good Brothers. You know, they might bring it back. Uh, like We could yeah. probably ask them to, and they might. Yeah. But anyway, well, that dream, keep that dream alive, kid. The Saudis it's, might holler at you, bro. It's, it's not, yeah, it's not dying anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about this many times. Yeah, when not. I run down the platform. Hey, hey I would be like 55. You fucking, don't give a fuck. I, I will fucking go in there. Yeah, I don't blame you. See, I feel like I have, I would have a good role as being someone's manager. Yeah. Because like the managers in there. Like, like they Miss just, Elizabeth. They basically just hype up who they're like with, you know? Yeah. So for example, like Trey at NFT NYC, if they were to interview Trey, Trey could just stand there, not even say anything. And I could just talk about Trey. That, that, <laughs> that, that, like that's my role. Dude. I think I, I got saw, the mic skills. I saw somebody and it's, I think it was an artist that brought his friend with him, but he plays a xylophone, but he doesn't talk. Okay. And I cannot remember who the fuck it was, but he, the xylophone was the beat. So they tried to interview him and he was like, Oh, he doesn't talk. And they, they, they were like, <laughs> okay. He was like, he just here to play the xylophone. And then he hit yeah. the beat and the dude started rapping over the beat. And then when he's done, he just put it down. Still don't talk. Like you could be that guy. Like where, or Trey's that guy. He don't talk. No, it, tr Trey, just, just, Trey just has the, that red zip up. No shirt no on. Shirt. Just un Gotta be no it, shirt, with yeah. the glasses on. He just stands with his arm crossed. Yeah. And I'm just there. You just this gassing is, him up. And I'm just there saying, listen, I don't like all oh, you web three people. I don't think you know who you're messing with. This is King Trayvon the air. Yeah. Just a kid from Akron, Ohio. Yeah. yeah. Listen, like, <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, if you get a tweet back from <laughs> this guy, you should make that an NFT. <laughs> That's right. Like you should be, you should be thankful that you're in the same, you're breathing the same breath as Trayvon the yes. air right now. The king, one <laughs> of the founding that. fathers of Web three, and that's why these NFTs cost one million dollars a piece. That's right. Fuck that's, the board apes. That is fucking right. <laughs> Fuck the Fuck board the apes. apes. <laughs> Fuck the board apes. Yeah. The board apes are gonna get their ass kicked by fucking varsity creative. That's fucking right. Facts. I like that. All right. Um, could you clip that for Trey's Instagram? Yeah, that's a good yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me see. See, yeah, it's like, hey, see y'all at NYC. I'm bringing my hype man with me. Yeah, you're like Murphy Lee. Do you know who that is? That's uh, R not Murphy R. Lee. Kelly. I said R. Kelly. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, Nelly's old hype man that used to wear the half uh, mask. That's, that's yo, 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 yo. Maybe, maybe before we go to NFT NYC, we'll we'll make like a fake like uh, promo. We're like we're like you're interviewing us about our potential experience. Yeah, like we're hyping up like a pay per view match. Yeah, I like Sick. it. You're born for this. Yeah, just yeah. security. <laughs> <laughs> you should uh, have like a name tag too. For sure. Yeah, yeah. People start slipping you hundreds to get his number. You know but what yo, I mean? Like, yeah. Yo, yo, can I slide in his DMs? No. No. <laughs> okay. no. You're not approved. No. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, that's Where do you segue from that one? I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, anything else to wrap up this exciting new year? 2023? No. I, wouldn't I can't even believe it's 2023. Get shredded, bro. It's yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, all right, I'm going to predict a few things. We're about to all get yoked out of our mind. Yep. Um, probably make more money than we ever have before. And what else? I don't know. I think like I'm about to like bust through some barriers. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I've been really thinking about lately. Keep going. Because I, the other thing I was listening to with Tim Ferriss, and they were saying like him and James were talking about obviously habits that contribute to the person you want to be. The identity based. Stuff. Correct. Or mm -hmm. see yourself as. I've seen myself as a different guy, not different, like I'm personally different, but 
the way that I'm operating or maybe the amount of people that are consuming the content for a little while, but it's not happened yet. So I'm really trying to figure out what makes that happen, right? <clears throat> so I'm obviously starting some new things where I'm doing things on a regular basis that's contributing to content even more than I have been. But two things I took from the podcast, which shout out to Tim Ferriss and James Clear. It's like his newest episode. And Tim's like so, so fucking analytical. Sometimes it's hard for me to listen to him, but this one's a little bit more like a genuine, just regular conversation. But two things he said, you see yourself, uh, the person you want to be, which I kind of have always been like that in my head. And I feel like a lot of my thing, a lot of my stuff is contributing to that, but it hasn't got over the edge yet. But he also said, create content that keeps paying you back, keeps working for you. So this is a great example. This podcast right now, will just be out there. Somebody could be listening to it two years from now and still get inspired by this conversation, right? It's going to keep working for us. Trey's already king. Mm -hmm. They knew because they listen to this, they go look him up. Now he's got 100,000 followers. Now the NFTs are fucking 27,000 a piece. They know it from... So my point is, he said the reason Atomic Habits happened was he had wrote an article about the psychological habits thing. It sat on his website for like two years. Mm -hmm. Somebody from the New Yorker picked it up. Somebody from CNBC or whatever wanted to have an interview. He says on the interview, hey, by the way, I'm going to launch a book. Can I come back in 10 months? I don't know if he was ready in 10 months or he just gave himself that deadline. Doesn't matter. That's part of how he launched it. But it came from an article he wrote previous years previously, but it did really well. But he said, I keep creating things on a regular basis, which I believe we do a ton of that here, that will keep paying it back. Because it's still working for you. Because it doesn't go anywhere. Books, articles, videos, Twitter threads, doesn't matter. So the other other thing uh, <clears throat> that really caught my attention too is when he was talking about publishing a book and for it really to go to like the next like next tier was um, was all talking about like word of mouth. But like yes. how do you how do you get the word of mouth? He quoted like Seth Godin or something like that, and it was yeah. you have to produce something that's remarkable, yep. meaning something that's worthy of remark. And I've already and written like, down a bunch of ideas and even how they titled it. There's a lot of really good stuff in there yeah. that I've already got like, okay, well, the third one maybe will be a hit. I feel like that's the same type of thing. Like yeah. I'm getting better and through the process of me writing, even tweeting every day, I'm going to continue to get better. And I believe wholeheartedly that I'm one of these type of guys. It just hasn't happened yet. It has happened in a certain area for yeah. sure. Like I've had some success in my industry, but like the way I view myself or I think eventually I'll be, I've always looked at Tim and guys like James Clear, Michael Easter, dudes like this. And I'm like, I can be that guy, those type of guys. That's how I want to be. And I just need to keep doing the actions to be that. Um, but I think the amount of stuff that we're creating is part of mm -hmm that process. I mean, all the people sharing, <clears throat> liking, retweeting all that shit. Yeah. That's, that's, the they're giving me the word of mouth. They're giving me the feedback of, so. I need to continue. Not the one idiot that fucking tweeted me, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that, so listen, I know we're a podcast telling you to listen to another podcast, but I would definitely recommend listening to the James clear. And he's a Denison grad. He's a Columbus guy. James clears killing it. Sold 10 million books. Tim Ferriss has killed it. Sold a bazillion books. It's a really good conversation that yeah. I found a lot of value in. Um, and I met Tim in person before. He's awesome. He's, uh, like talking to a computer, but he's just always grabbing information. And, and we interviewed him multiple times on the old show. Yeah. I mean, these guys are really fucking smart. So I'm just trying to take some of those things and say, eh, that's what we got to do. Mm -hmm. That's so, crazy. Anything else? That's good. Trayvon? No. I mean, King Trey? <laughs> Straight. All right. Round table podcast. We are out, my boy. I'm, I'm your boy, Corey G. Small arms. Danny at Trey Speed slash King Trey. And the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak, brought to you by MaxInformuscle.com. We are out.